Dr. Madhav Rajaram Rajwade is a highly accomplished and dedicated principal of Parletilak Vidyalaya Association's Sathe College in Mumbai. With an extensive educational background and 34 years of experience in the field of physics education, Dr. Rajwade is renowned for his expertise and contributions in his field. Dr. Rajwade holds a PhD in physics education. His research focuses on utilizing a specially developed knowledge organization tool to enhance students' learning abilities. He has published several research papers in esteemed journals, including the International Journal of Nano Dimension and Archives of Applied Science Research, and also published books which covered first year BSc syllabus. Dr. Rajwade's expertise has been recognized internationally and he has presented his research at various conferences. As a principal, Dr. Rajwade brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to his role. He has also completed several research projects funded by BCUD University of Mumbai and contributed in college administration as a member of different committees as chairman or coordinator. He has been appointed as VC nominee on the screening com evaluation committees of various prestigious colleges of Mumbai University. He is also a member of Perspective Plan Committee University of Mumbai. Recently, he has been appointed as an associate dean of University of Mumbai Faculty of Science and Technology. He is also an in-charge director of Professor Bal Apte Center of Studies and Youth Movement. Lately, he has been instrumental in making a short film to explain the features of new educational policy and thereby actively promoting and helping many colleges to execute the National Education Policy 2020. Welcome Vidya Vachaspati Dr. Madhav Rajwade. I am indeed uh, filled with uh, a great amount of pride and uh, happiness uh, today this morning uh, because Palliatic Vidyalaya Association has uh, given us teachers an opportunity uh, to look at our uh, journey while we are doing our PhD. Uh, this is uh, a very special thing to me uh, because at present I am uh, working as a principal of Sathe College. And uh, I'm going to get an opportunity to look back on events which happened uh, around uh, 2000 and 2008 uh, in my life uh, because 2008 was the year uh, when I was awarded PhD. Uh, I have completed more than 34 years of my service in this particular institution uh, which is now called as Sathe College but uh, earlier it was Parley College. 
I joined this college in 1989 as a lecturer in physics and uh, at that time I uh, was uh, last member of my department, the 12th member. Uh, we had a big department with uh, all stalwarts, filled with a uh, lot of stalwarts uh, in their respective uh, subjects, uh, specializations in physics. Along the way, I got acquainted with uh, the then uh, senior teacher of my college, uh, my department, uh, Dr. S. V. Panse. He had connection with uh, HBCSC, Homeopathy Center for Science Education, a TFR body. Uh, at that time, uh, it was at Grant Road. Uh, they used to run a weekly study circle. Uh, the concept of study circle was like this that uh, uh, some teachers of degree college, a junior college uh, in city of Mumbai uh, would gather in a small uh, classroom uh, at Grant Road. That is where HBCSC at that time was situated. Uh, we were uh, amongst them, myself and Pansa sir. And some students of uh, junior uh, degree colleges, junior colleges would assemble at a specific time on a specific day of a week. And uh, in those uh, study circle sessions, uh, certain topics of physics would be discussed. Uh, and those topics would be such that uh, those uh, questions were uh, used to be posed. And uh, through those sessions, an attempt was being made to make sure that uh, students' conceptual enrichment happens. Now, for that, uh, there were many techniques being used. Uh, uh, one of them being problem solving, uh, uh, the other uh, being uh, trying to see relationship amongst the uh, physics concepts. Uh, if I have to uh, put it in simple language uh, uh, for anyone to uh, grasp, it was like thinking aloud. You know, all of us think in our head, but that process of thinking is not uh, externalized, is not, uh, you know, visible to uh, uh, ordinary eyes, uh, not even to any microscope because it is uh, uh, in a way uh, abstract. Uh, so, this whole session uh, reminds me of one uh, motto uh, by IBM, uh, they're, uh, they're, they are a business company, inter, uh, international uh, business machines, the precursor of all uh, digital technology today. Uh, their motto was think. So, this sessions which I am talking about. Uh, were uh, of such a nature which would uh, encourage students to think uh, in a logical manner the way it is required in the subject of physics. Uh, this was my first window into uh, students conceptual understanding and uh, this is the window uh, which actually uh, helped me understand the process of teaching. Uh, in many ways it uh, exposed me to the uh, realities of our classroom. Our classrooms are filled with students, uh, that is a good thing because that is how we will take more and more uh, students under uh, the uh, uh, school education, higher education in terms of what is now called as gross enrollment ratio. This is a good thing to happen. Uh, but I observed as I uh, uh, kept on attending those sessions that uh, in these uh, classroom sessions uh, actually there is no time, uh, there is no scope to observe uh, the, uh, you know, in real time how students are learning. Uh, because the whole emphasis is on completion of syllabus, taking them to examinations and so on. Uh, that is for the very purpose schools and colleges are built. But this particular crucial aspect somehow is uh, uh, lost. Uh, again, uh, when I studied deeper in this particular uh, uh, field, I uh, found out that this is not a merely Indian phenomena. This is a problem which exists worldwide uh, in all classrooms where in fact the ratio is favorable. Uh, uh, so, students uh, actually uh, carry some misconceptions when they enter the classroom uh, because students are not blank slates to write upon. I mean they do not come to the classroom totally blank. They may be unaware about what you want to teach, uh, but they have some notions, they have some understanding which they carry when they come to the classrooms. So, what teacher has to really do is to identify these uh, misconceptions and uh, try to remove them and teach them accordingly. That is the right way of uh, taking students forward. Uh, that is what I realized. Uh, in fact, a very important lesson I, I uh, drew in this whole uh, exercise uh, of study circles is that actually there is no process like teaching. 
Uh, it's only learning which everybody has to go through. Uh, in fact, I formed an opinion that uh, there is something uh, which we call as coaching and uh, there is something called as learning. Uh, I, I also learned which is now uh, at that point of time uh, now known to everyone that teacher actually is a facilitator. Uh, teacher is there to see that students progress in their understanding and uh, this is where these weekly study circles uh, uh, demonstrated to me that how one can become this uh, required fa facilitator in learning process of a student. Now in our classroom we are aware, we have to be aware that uh, the student teacher ratio is not uh, favorable, it is a hurdle, it is a big hurdle in making sure that uh, students learn effectively in a classroom or they can be encouraged to take their own uh, uh, you know learning forward and uh, not just initial learning but we are trying to see that their whole conceptual network uh, becomes robust and strong, it is a very tough situation. It is a very, very tough situation for a student and teacher both. Uh, but then uh, uh, what, what I figured, what I found out uh, with the help of my uh, guide is that uh, J.D. Novak, he was a biologist, uh, you can look it up. Uh, he invented this, uh, the, the technique of concept mapping. Uh, I, I, we will talk about it in uh, detail in, uh, uh, in, in, a, uh, in my uh, talk further. Uh, but concept mapping is a graphical tool and uh, J.D. Novak came up with a very important concept of learning how to learn. Means he is not assuming that learning comes naturally. He is trying to say that uh, learning has to be practiced. You have to be, uh, you know, you have to be in a way conscious of your learning. You have to make effort to learn. It is not going to be an automatic thing. Like you know, there are few things which, as uh, as a kid, uh, we grow up as an uh, as an adult. Like we learn to walk, that's also an effort, but it comes to us. Like swimming, when suppose you are jumping in a pool, uh, you eventually learn somehow to uh, uh, keep yourself afloat. Uh, the learning of a subject or concept is not like that. That is slightly different. Uh, so Novak said that we must adopt a graphical tool because what we see we understand better. The idea behind this whole uh, exercise is that what we see we can see better, we can grasp it better. Uh, uh, he said that we should adopt a technique of a map, a geographical map tells you what, tells you where you are, it tells you that this is a place you are and uh, maybe you use it to find out where you want to go and also uh, it helps you in identifying what is the path you are going to take. That means the starting point, ending point and also the journey is what uh, map will tell you. Uh, what Novak did uh, was to adopt this particular technique or I should say adapt uh, this particular technique uh, to learning. Uh, he said that uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can externalize the concepts in our uh, head or mind on a piece of paper and that is how uh, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to gauge, understand. Uh, as to what is the uh, real learning process of a student. Uh, he also developed a technique of quantifying knowledge structures uh, of students. Uh, knowledge structure means uh, precisely what I said, the concept map of a given topic which the student has to learn or a student is being taught. So he developed a technique to uh, teach students of drawing up concept map of a topic. Uh, which would have different concepts arranged in a particular way, uh, let us not go into details of that, uh, in a particular way and uh, then that will reveal uh, what is an understanding they have developed in that particular topic, that is the uh, Novak's technique. Uh, this technique in fact uh, 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 in, in terms of cognition, cognition is a science of understanding. In cognitions there are three, uh, uh, three important features of our uh, thinking, that is analysis, synthesis and evaluation. Analysis obviously means uh, you know breaking it down, uh, synthesis means uh, putting it together and evaluation means to judge uh, whatever I have, uh, I have at uh, hand. Like for example, uh, there is a judge in a competition, uh, the judge is doing what? Uh, the performances of students, uh, he or she is judging and giving them uh, you know evaluating them. In that same sense, 
uh, whatever material I have a student should be able to judge that particular material. So, these are the important uh, features of our understanding which get strengthened uh, when you uh, practice concept map. Now, the difficulty of this technique is an excellent uh, technique, it is a scientific technique, but uh, it is time consuming to learn means uh, the difficulty is like this that you are trying to teach students learning, you have a technique which is also good elaborate, but that itself takes time. Uh, so, the problem is that you have a medicine, uh, you have a disease, but the disease uh, is, is bad enough, but the medicine is even harder. Uh, so, the difficulty uh, in this technique which I am pointing out, uh, which we realized at that point of time uh, was that uh, it is a good medicine, but it will require a very difficult uh, you know technique to administer that medicine. Uh, you will understand why I am to understand concept maps, let us take one example, uh, the concept map of water. As you can see in the uh, 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 diagram in front of you, water is a central concept. And what has been done is that uh, the concepts which are related to water are in a oval uh, globule as you can see on the uh, on the screen. Uh, so, for example, water, living things, molecules, uh, stages, uh, states sorry, states of uh, water, uh, states of matter like solid, gas, liquid, ice, steam, uh, etc. and etc. But all these are connected by uh, certain sentences. Uh, for example, uh, water needed by living things, water made of molecules, molecules are in motion, okay? uh, motion from heat. So, uh, basically what we gather from here is that and in the end the whole thing ends up in example. So, starting from central concept slowly you move down uh, to an example uh, that means uh, any relation between concepts is hierarchical in nature starting from the central concept to uh, more and more uh, easier concepts. So, this particular structure to the knowledge uh, requires to be uh, parameterized, requires to be converted into numbers and that is what uh, Novak did uh, by creating one scoring mechanism for concept map. Uh, Let us see another example then we will understand uh, this is example in algebra. Uh, where very important uh, uh, algebraic concepts have been listed and their interrelations have been uh, you know illustrated in this particular map. Uh, so, just to uh, summarize uh, the technique, the technique is graphical in nature, it certainly helps students uh, in identifying the uh, uh, identifying the important key concepts in a given topic. It also, uh, uh, it also helps students uh, understand what is the interrelations of these particular topics and uh, uh, it is also amenable to uh, you know quantification. You can put a number to students concept map and all that, uh, all that is there. But only difficulty as we realize is that uh, the technique itself is time consuming and uh, probably in a classroom size which we have it is not very easy to uh, adopt that technique. And that is where I found uh, my, uh, my topic of my PhD. Uh, I found that uh, I realized that this particular technique can be slightly modified, changed and applied to my topic uh, uh, that is electrostatics uh, I chose as a topic to study. And uh, another thing I realized that this particular topic is highly uh, interdisciplinary in nature. Today it is a buzzword. But way back in 2000, uh, it was just starting, this idea was just coming forward and the topic we chose uh, had an element of physics, statistics, educational psychology and uh, also cognitive science. Uh, to put it very in simple terms, it was uh, in a way trying to document journey of a student from mere novice to become an expert, how a student can be uh, converted, can be taken from uh, the novice uh, to an expert whose uh, conceptual network is uh, rich and it will help him uh, solving uh, problem. I registered for PhD in YCMOU in uh, 2000 uh, with the help of uh, really great minds which uh, I got an opportunity to work with. Uh, Dr. Panse, my guide Dr. Pradhan uh, who was at that time director of HBCSC and also Dr. Arvind Kumar who was also a former director of uh, uh, HBCSE before uh, Dr. Pradhan took over. 
so these were uh, golden times to me uh, really because all these were uh, people who uh, who guided me into this particular a very very important uh, stage of my life. So if I have to sum up this phase of my life then I can just uh, write one line which says uh, that this was a journey which began in a very casual afternoon at HBCSC which took a, a completely definitive turn towards uh, intellectual inquiry into students knowledge structures in physics that was my uh, topic. Now let us let us look at my work uh, more uh, uh, in a focused manner. So my uh, topic uh, of study was related to I am not going to uh, tell you the actual uh, uh, sentence which is uh, in PhD the topic titles can be quite cumbersome. So that is what I am avoiding. I am simply saying that my work is related to students knowledge organization in physics. Uh, the topic I chose just one topic I chose that was in the uh, physics uh, area uh, is electrostatics. What is electrostatics? Uh, electrostatics uh, all of us are aware about current electricity you know our homes run on electricity. So that is charge in action charge which is moving okay we say electric current we have meters we have all our uh, gadgets working on uh, electric current. Electrostatics is the opposite of that. Electrostatics means that charge at rest okay? uh, and there are variety of theoretical uh, underpinnings to this particular topic uh, and it is completely abstract. Why did I choose it? Because it is completely abstract that is not something I can easily pinpoint upon uh, to work of electrostatics. Uh, one daily simple example to understand electrostatics is uh, that if you comb your hair uh, then the uh, the comb is charged believe me this is taught in simple school physics and if you touch those uh, that particular comb to simple paper uh, pieces that paper pieces uh, small paper pieces are picked up by the comb. So this is a very simple example of electrostatics. So this particular topic of electrostatics uh, we chose and we decided that let me understand let us investigate how students understand uh, electrostatics. Uh, so we, we selected a sample of about 60 students and we worked uh, for them uh, with them for about 3-4 uh, uh, years and uh, that is where we learnt that the knowledge structures of students can be parameterized. Parameterized means we can convert the structures uh, into numbers because uh, as any science requires, physics requires, if I want to understand anything I need to convert it into numbers. Along the way we also developed a technique to identify interrelations with concepts uh, because what is learning is not just identifying concepts, understanding concepts. It means understanding relations between concepts and that is what is called as semantic relations in literature. Uh, semantic means what it means, what a particular word means, what a particular word's relation to another word, what a particular concept relation to another concept means that is semantic relations. So we discovered a lot of them. We hope to convert students from uh, a mere novice to an expert who can actually understand physical principles, actually apply these uh, understanding of concepts and their interrelations to problem solving. That was the objective, that is the thing uh, we uh, hope to study. Uh, in fact, uh, we wanted to promote not just understanding but comprehension. Comprehension means to get the whole picture, not look at the isolated parts but to get the whole picture. That was the uh, project we started with a small sample of 60 students uh, in the second year of BSc in my college plus some other colleges. Uh, uh, how can we parameterize this number? How can we convert the student knowledge organization into a number? So for that purpose we developed one number. Uh, which is called as soundness number S. Uh, the technique was very simple. The technique was like this that we chose about 5 concepts, uh, central concepts in electrostatics and simply asked them, the students to list whatever comes to their mind related to that concept on a piece of paper. For example, uh, we gave them a central concept charge. So there were about 60 students, we tell them to make a list of concepts which they think are related to charge. Okay? They just make a list, they were given certain time 
and only tool which they had was a pencil or a pen and a paper and of course their mind. Uh, so they have to just make a list of uh, concepts in that particular manner and then uh, we developed a technique to identify these concepts into closely related that is C, uh, distantly related that is D denoted by D and uh, R that is uh, the remotely related. And then we have one empirical formula which I, to which I will come uh, again uh, after a little while uh, that is soundness number S should be defined as uh, C plus 0.5 D. Uh, that means we took care that uh, for a number to be uh, soundness number to be defined properly I should have large number of concepts in a closely related category and what I should do is that I should give weightage to this particular number like for example a student gives large number of concepts in closely related category uh, so that is a big number but distantly related uh, you know should give 50 percent of the credit and if a student gives totally unrelated something which is not uh, relevant for a charge as a as a central concept uh, is R remotely related should get a zero credit. That is why empirically the soundness number becomes uh, a formula which is closely related a combination of closely related uh, concepts number of closely related concepts plus half of the weightage is half distantly related concepts and that is my S number for a student for that particular central concepts. So like this we kept on repeating this with different students with uh, different central concepts and came up with S number for the each, uh, uh, each central concept for each student. So we got a library of such uh, concepts. So it is a complicated way of uh, arriving at their knowledge structures. I am just trying to give you a sense of what we actually did. Uh, so of course I will avoid the details. Uh, further we use this soundness number technique uh, to develop one specially uh, developed study skill development program that also I am going to omit uh, at the moment. Uh, but that also was an important feature of our study. Uh, now we define uh, productivity number P. Uh, for a particular student uh, that as the total number of valid concepts uh, which is generated by, uh, 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 by, by a student uh, which is corresponding to a given central concept. And this P uh, we can classify into uh, three parts uh, that is closely related, distantly related and remotely related concepts uh, which is related to the central concepts. So in simple formula uh, to connect all of them would be P equal to C plus D plus R. <coughs> now the criterion to decide uh, this particular CDR uh, is a separate topic which again I am not dealing with uh, in this uh, talk. Uh, but uh, one more thing needs to be defined that is uh, how many of concepts which are generated by a student related to central concept are closely related. Uh, so for that uh, we proposed uh, what is called as closeness index CI and that CI is defined uh, like a weighted average. Uh, it is a combination of closely related concepts, distantly related concept and remotely related concepts. Uh, we, we decide empirically, we decided empirically that actually closely related concepts should get higher weightage, uh, distantly related should get half of the weightage of closely related concepts. And of course remotely related in no way connected to the central concept should get zero weightage. So the formula would become CI as uh, C plus 0.5 D plus uh, 0 into R. In fact that means R does not exist uh, remotely related automatically it will get uh, eliminated. So CI is calculated for every student for every central concept in very simple words. Uh, if student generates large number of responses uh, which is very closely related to the uh, central concepts that means his uh, or her <coughs> CI central concept is very high, uh, closeness index is very high. If a student has all its uh, his concepts her concepts in closely related category then very simply uh, the arithmetic will tell you that P is equal to C. And that is why the uh, CI closeness index is 1 uh, which is of course an ideal uh, thing it will not happen uh, every time for every student. 
On the other hand, if a student is more productive, means simply generating large number of concepts, uh, but maybe all the responses are in remotely related concepts, that also does not help because then the weightage of R is 0. Uh, so, in that case the closeness index will be 0. A student in general may have responses in the middle category, uh, that means uh, some of them are distantly related, some of them are uh, closely related and uh, in such cases uh, uh, the, the, the weightage is 0.5 as we said, a uh, student then uh, in that case uh, will fall into this category P equal to D where closely uh, related index or CI index is 0.5. Uh, once this particular uh, you know classification of concept generated by student was over, we defined uh, very carefully the uh, parameter which we wanted to use to convert students knowledge structures into uh, uh, a tangible number S number as <coughs> simply product of CI and P. CI is closeness index and P is uh, the productivity, large number of concepts being given by the student related to the central concept that is S. Uh, this gives us the formula which I quoted earlier. Uh, S equal to C plus 0.5 D. If a student gives, uh, uh, give, gives us a very high S number, what does it mean? It means that a student is giving us a large number of concepts, alright that is the student has large P, but also a student is giving us those concepts which are related, very closely related to the central concept. So, that particular student has a closeness index as 1, ideally 1. So, this is a student we are looking at and this is a student who would get this particular benefit of uh, undergoing this particular SSDP student skills development program. Now I have reached a, a, a stage where I must uh, qualify uh, what we have done. Uh, that is the qualification is in terms of scope of work and limitation of work, it is as it is always done in any research. Uh, we have a scope uh, which I, I could not actually build upon after my PhD is that we can use this technique which we have developed uh, to create student centric remedial program to uh, help them learn better. Uh, another very important feature of our program is that it is a self learning program once students and which I have seen it happening during my PhD that once students understand how to organize their own uh, you know knowledge about a topic. Uh, it helps them transferring it to another subject. So, it is a very important tool of self learning. Another very, very important feature of our uh, work which we did at that point of time was uh, that it provides feedback to the students themselves about their own understanding of a subject. Uh, it is extremely helpful for students to learn electrostatics because I have said or in earlier uh, uh, my presentation, my talk uh, earlier part. I said that it is abstract, I cannot give uh, you know real life examples in electrostatics, nobody can. Uh, so, uh, it is a good technique to externalize our understanding about the uh, uh, electrostatics. And another very, very important promising thing <coughs> here is semantic relations. Between two concepts there can be some relation, so we could we, we have identified certain important semantic relations in physics concepts, it is a pay, we have uh, written a paper about it. That is a very important feature of uh, our work. Uh, however, uh, such kind of work always has limitations. Uh, the most important one is the sample size. Uh, it is for though it is statistically significant work, I had to apply statistical tests to all the uh, scores which uh, we got ultimately. The sample size is small. Uh, secondly, it was done for only one topic in physics, uh, not that it was repeated for many topics in physics or not that it was done for every subject in science, uh, that is the limitation alright. And uh, uh, though we took all care of uh, using all statistically you know required uh, tests uh, for our work, uh, it is a true group design, people use different kinds of uh, research designs. So, that is another topic we did not, uh, we did not use uh, other research designs, only one design was tried. Uh, in spite of all these uh, limitations, uh, I must say that uh, what this particular uh, work gave me. It gave me uh, first of all uh, an opportunity to uh, venture into, uh, uh, into a topic which uh, very uh, uh, 
very rarely uh, dealt with in, a, in a higher education, uh, particularly in sciences. Uh, secondly, it gave me uh, a company of such great minds like which I mentioned, uh, Professor Pradhan, Professor Arun Kumar and my guide Dr. Panse. Uh, just being with them was actually a godsend and uh, uh, I developed a very important link with uh, HBCSC, TIFR uh, and Yashwant Chauhan Maharashtra Open University. Uh, these were the uh, forward looking institutions who had all tools of uh, uh, all tools of uh, PhD investigation which are now, now. it was in 2000 uh, when they had open defense system. It was in, uh, later uh, they had this particular uh, system of reporting on your PhD work uh, at a periodic interval of time. Uh, there was a criticism involved uh, every time uh, that is the uh, important feedback from stakeholders. Uh, so, in that way it uh, to me it as a teacher it enriched me in a big way. Uh, it also taught me uh, what are uh, my limitations uh, or any teacher's limitations to uh, engage uh, instruction in the classroom. And uh, uh, most of all it, uh, it told me uh, that how challenging it is to teach physics to the students. So, that is the way of making you uh, more humble uh, while delivering your job. Thank you.